Hey YouTube, Nurse Mark here. Today we're going to talk about TDEE and how to use it for cutting and bulking. Now you're going to need to follow these steps exactly or risk losing all of your progress. <laughs> what a load of crap. Don't let somebody overcomplicate this for you. They may be trying to sell you on something. Unless you're in the midst of contest prep, you don't need to go full ham on this. Let's talk about total daily energy expenditure or TDEE and why you need to know that number for cutting and bulking. Understanding your total daily energy expenditure, or TDEE, is important for cutting or bulking. Because depending on whether you're cutting or bulking, you do actually need to know what this number is. So a TDEE is the number of calories you need to consume in a day, given your current activity levels, in order to maintain your current body mass. Now this shouldn't be consumed with BMR, which is your basal metabolic rate. This is the minimum number of calories that your body needs in a day to perform basic metabolic function. Really quickly, let's touch on BMR. So basal metabolic rate is a calculation based off of your body's caloric needs, assuming that you're lying in bed, motionless, and breathing, or maybe we're breathing for you. So one of my intubated ICU patients, for example, they're lying in bed, motionless, and we're actually kind of breathing for them sometimes. So we will use a calculation in the ICU that's based off of their BMR. However, what we do is we take their BMR, there's a dietitian's calculation, and that tells us how many calories we need to feed that patient while they're lying in that bed, motionless. Hint, it's actually higher than their BMR. So you're not lying motionless in a bed, I hope. So you have to go off of a calculation called TDEE, which is the number of calories you need in a day, assuming your activity level. So if you're a mostly sedentary person, you're gonna need less calories than say a CrossFitter who's training competitively two to three times a day. So I'm six foot one, 200 pounds. So my BMR is somewhere around 1900 calories, but my TDEE is around 3200 calories. That's a big difference, but if you're six foot one and 200 pounds, your BMR is also 1900 or around 1900. What's your TDE? It might be drastically higher or drastically lower. I got a buddy who's a CrossFit competitor. I reference CrossFit competitors a lot because I have some friends and they never seem to stop moving. But I got a CrossFit buddy who eats about 5,000 calories a day to maintain his body weight because he trains so hard. That's gross. So how do we calculate our TDE? The easiest and simplest way is there's a lot of websites online that allow you to do it. Now I could give you some giant calculation or I could just link some uh, websites down below that you can punch in your numbers and get a TDEE. Now there are people online that'll turn around and say, nope, you gotta use this calculation and follow these steps exactly. And they are way overselling the importance of this. A TDEE, especially from a calculation, is a very basic number. It's a guesstimate of the number of calories that you need in a day, but it's not an exact science. Don't kill yourself with this number, right? If you go online and it says 2,500 and you start eating at 2,500 and it wasn't 2,500, that's fine. You're gonna need to play, you're gonna need to tweak. So how do we figure out if our TDE is accurate? Well, unfortunately, you're gonna have to step on a scale. And I'm not the biggest scale guy. Um, I don't really like them. I think that we can have a very negative association with a number on a scale and get lost. However, when calculating your maintenance calories with TDE, you are gonna have to step on a scale to start. So before you start eating at your TDEE that we just calculated because you went to one of those websites, you're going to want to weigh yourself on day one. What you're going to do is you're going to wake up in the morning, and you're going to go pee or poo or both, and you're going to weigh yourself naked. So week to week, you're going to weigh yourself on the same day at approximately the same time. This just ensures the most accurate reading. Don't get in the habit of weighing yourself daily. This is going to cause mental health problems and negative associations with a scale and food. Unless you're in the midst of contest prep, you shouldn't be weighing yourself daily. Somebody's selling you on something. Trust me, there's a lot of psychology around weighing yourself daily and the negative effects that it has. So now you're going to start eating at your TDEE for two weeks. What we're trying to do here is establish what we call maintenance calories. All right? And the reason that you need to give yourself two weeks is your body needs to adjust to the new macros and calories that you're taking in. Now, if the scale doesn't move in two weeks, that's your TDE. Congrats, you've established maintenance. Now, if you lose weight, you're eating under your TDE. And if you've gained weight, you're eating above your TDE. Now, depending on how many carbs you've changed in your diet, you may find that you've gained a little bit of water weight, and that's okay. Carbs are good, they help fuel your workout. But if you all of a sudden went from eating 50 grams of carbs a day to 500, you need to give yourself that time to adjust your body weight. So if you start eating a ton of carbs, Take one week to adjust to the carbs and then two weeks to eat at your TDE to establish maintenance. Now let's say you lose a pound over the course of that two weeks. All right, A pound is approximately 3,500 calories, but it's not exact, but we're gonna say it's about 3,500 calories. All right, That means you've eaten 3,500 calories less than your TDE over two weeks or about 250 calories a day. So try adding 250 calories to your diet and then do this again for two weeks to establish maintenance. If the scale doesn't move, we've got our TDE. 
Of course, it's easy to forget that if we start changing the intensity of our workouts, that's going to drastically change the number of calories we, uh, we need. If you start running 5K a day all of a sudden, you're going to need more calories than if you didn't do that. So mentally, you need to adjust along the way. For the start, I would just stick to the same workout program consistently for two to four weeks to establish those maintenance calories and then adjust later. Ugh. Now that we got that number, let's talk about macros. All right, macros are protein, fats, and carbohydrates. For protein, you're gonna aim for about one gram per pound of body weight in order to maintain your muscle mass on a cut or to give your body enough protein in order to help bulking. Video right there, right there, somewhere up top. That video talks a little bit about the science of protein intake on a bulker cut if you're really interested in the science, but other than that, one gram per pound of lean body mass for protein. Now for fats. Fats are an important part of your diet. Don't neglect them. For our purposes in this conversation, fats are responsible for hormonal control, testosterone, estrogen production, and a plethora of other things. Fats don't make you fat, they're necessary for your body to function, so don't neglect them. You're gonna aim for 0.4 grams per pound of body mass, all right? So I'm 200 pounds, that 0.4 calculation, I need 80 grams of fat in a day. Now let's put those numbers together, using me as an example, why not? So I'm 200 pounds, so given that my TDEE is 3,200 calories, I need 200 grams of protein, which is about 800 calories, and 80 grams of fat, which is about 720 calories, leaving me with a total of 1,680 calories left over to fill in with whatever the heck I want. Now I can use that 1,680 calories for whatever I want, fill it in with pro protein, fats, or carbohydrates. I do recommend that people eat carbohydrates in order to fuel their workout, but if you're keto, you don't have to. So for that 1,680 calories, I can eat as many carbs as I want because I've hit my protein and I've hit my fat goals. All right, so I can just fill it in with carbs if I want. Or protein being more satiating of all the macronutrients, you could eat more protein so you feel more full, say you're on a cut or something. It doesn't matter what you choose to fill in with those calories, just know that you can do protein, fats, or carbs to make that number up to your TDEE. The biggest thing when it comes to cutting, bulking, or maintaining is making sure you hit your protein and your fat goals. There are no carbohydrate goals, all right? You're just looking to hit your protein and your fats and filling it in, the rest is whatever you want, protein, fat, or carbs. So now it's time to cut. Let's get lean for summer. So how are we gonna do that? Real simple. We're gonna take off 250 to 500 calories off our TDEE in order to help us lose weight. And that'll aim to lose about half to one pound of body weight a week. Why do we wanna do this slow? Why don't we wanna lose five pounds of body weight in a week? If you cut too harshly too fast, your body's not gonna tap into body fat in order to lose weight, it's gonna tax your muscles. The reason for this is your body's lazy, all right? It wants the fastest source of calories it possibly can. Now, if you have a small deficit, it'll start tapping into body fat stores. That's how we are evolutionarily. But if you cut too hard, too fast, your body's looking at body fat and saying, that's too hard to break down, but muscle is real easy, and you're gonna lose a lot of muscle mass on your cut. Now, there's two ways to cut. You can either look at a calorie deficit where you're aiming for 250 to 500. Now, the higher your body fat percentage, the higher that number can be, but the leaner you are, the smaller that number can be. Because as you lose body fat and you get leaner and leaner, you have to really trick your body into going after that body fat, which means you need to feed it less and less and less of a deficit. The second way to look at this is losing 0.5 to 1% of your body weight every single week, which depending on your body weight, say 200 pounds, that's either one to two pounds. Now, if I have a body fat percentage of 40%, I could probably lose one pound a week without worrying too much about muscle. But if I'm 200 pounds and 9% body fat, I gotta go for a much smaller number, otherwise my body's gonna start catabolizing muscle on the way down. Lastly, never eat below your BMR, all right? That's a terrible way, that's crash dieting, it's not effective, you'll lose too much muscle, you'll screw up your hormones, it's just a terrible idea, all right? That's why we have TDE calculations. And even my intubated ICU patient still gets fed more than their BMR, which should tell you that you need to eat more than your BMR. Please never eat below your BMR. Now comes the fun. We wanna bulk, we wanna get heavier, we wanna put on muscle. Bulks are always fun because you get to eat more. So there's two kinds of bulks we gotta talk about. The first is a lean bulk, and then the second one is a dirty bulk. So a lean bulk, we're basically gonna do the opposite of what we did with our cut. We're gonna eat 250 to 500 calories more than what our TDEE says in order to gain weight, looking for a weight, gaining weight about a half a pound to a pound on the scale. Now the leaner you are, or the further you are in your fitness journey, you wanna aim for a smaller, slower lean bulk. This is gonna be optimal over time because if you don't have a lot of newbie gains to draw from, you're risking putting on more fat than muscle. But if you're brand, brand new to the gym, you can eat a larger, uh, caloric surplus in order to gain weight. Quick way to look at this is if you're brand new to the gym, 
As a male, you can put on about half a pound, and as a female, you can put about a quarter of a pound worth of muscle every single week under optimal conditions for training. But if you're at five years of training, you're gonna be struggling to put on a quarter or half a pound a month. The advantage to a lean bulk where you're only eating 250 to 500 calories more is that you're giving your body everything it needs to build muscle, but you're not feeding it a ton extra that's gonna be stored as fat, right? The disadvantage is if you under eat too much, you're not maximizing the calories and protein intake in order to be able to build muscle, and you might be losing out on some gains. Now the famous dirty bulk is amazing, however, it's not optimal. A dirty bulk has you eating over 500 calories beyond your TDE year to make sure that your body has absolutely everything it needs to grow. Now, if you're brand new to the gym, you can get away with more dirty bulks, but if you've been doing this for five, six, seven years and you're unenhanced, dirty bulks aren't the way to go. Because we talked about how you can only gain like a quarter of a pound a month as under optimal conditions after five years once you've reached your growth potential. So much of that extra calories is gonna go to fat to get very little muscle. So dirty bulks are great when you start your fitness journey. Dirty bulks kind of suck later on. The main advantage of a dirty bulk is that you have enough calories to grow, right? So it's going to fuel your workouts, you're going to get maximum growth and development. The downside is all of those extra calories that your body doesn't need in order to grow get stored as body fat. Now when you're bulking, don't get caught up on that scale, okay? I hear from people all the time, bro, I gained 20 pounds in two months. And it's like, I, yeah, that's going to be two to four pounds of muscle and like 16 pounds of fat. That's not optimal muscle gain. If you had just dieted or bulked properly, I should say, you'd have made that four pounds of muscle anyways and maybe two to three pounds of fat. So don't get concentrated on that scale, right? If it goes up 10 pounds in a month, that's probably bad, unless you're on a ton of drugs and then that's probably good. Now it's important to note that as you're trying to lose weight or trying to gain weight, if you notice that the scale stops, let's say we're cutting and you've been cutting 500 calories off your diet and all of a sudden you notice for two weeks you haven't lost any weight, you gotta reduce that number again by another 250 to 500 calories because now you've established a brand new maintenance. So as your body gets bigger or it gets smaller, your caloric intake is gonna fluctuate. So when you're bulking, if you're eating 500 calories above your TDEE, and then all of a sudden the scale stops for two weeks, you're not eating enough to fill your body, right? So that's why it's kind of important to weigh yourself because if you don't notice a change in the scale, if it hasn't gone down or it hasn't gone up for two weeks, and you're not aware of that, you don't know to add calories or, to, or subtract calories as you go. That's it really. I mean, it's not that complicated, but it is kind of complicated, but it's not that complicated. TDE minus 250 to 500 calories or TDE plus 250 to 500 calories. Keep eating like that till the scale stops and then subtract or add more depending on what your goals are. So that's TDE, cutting and bulking basics. Now there's a lot of nuances that go along with this. This is the basics for people like you and me. I'm not a contest prep person. Uh, I am a power lifter. I don't bodybuild. If those are your goals, then yeah, you can hire a coach and they may really tack these things down for you. But if you're just an average Joe, this is really all you need to start and you can get lean with a six pack or get really big uh, just following these basic guidelines. You don't really have to overthink this. Like and subscribe, questions and comments down below, and as always, eat like a bodybuilder and train like a power lifter.